Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was standing just by the lake of Gennesaret. Yes, the lake of Gennesaret. And he looked and saw two ships. But he did not see anybody in the ships. He walked further, stepped into one of the ships, and behold, he saw Simon Peter washing his nets. For a man to wash his nets is either he is done catching fishes, or better still, he did not catch any, and he's frustrated and wants to leave. In the case of Simon Peter, Simon Peter was frustrated. He was tired. He had to let go for the day. And he was washing his nets to leave. And the Lord Jesus Christ said to him, Why not cast your nets again into the deep? Simon Peter said, Oh, we've been toiling all night. It's been morning, afternoon, night. We've been casting these nets. And nothing came forth. But the Lord Jesus Christ said to him again, Do it one more time. And that is why I am here today. To tell you to do it one more time. To tell you to do a switch in plan. To tell you to pray again. To tell you to ask again. To tell you not to give up on that marriage. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Welcome to this channel if you're new. My name is Sister Noe Eze. Talking to you all from Port Harcourt, Nigeria. I'm here to talk on a topic titled, Do this if your husband cheats on you. Two things to do if you have a cheating husband. I know so many of you must have come in contact with loads of videos here on YouTube, you know, on the social media and all that, and you've been doing what they ask you to do. I'm here to tell you what has worked for women. Not just women, great women like you under the sound of my voice. It may sound, oh, I have done this before. But child of God, just like Simon Peter, cast your net again into the deep. And the first I have here, without wasting so much of your time, is find yourself. This is what I said to somebody and it worked perfectly. The reason why that man is cheating on you. I'm not saying it's like the key reason. But one of the reasons could be that you have now decided to focus on him. Yes, he is cheating. Something prompted him to cheat. But now you focusing more on him instead of yourself is like a yardstick for him to continue. You have been shouting, has he changed? You have been insulting that woman, has he, has he changed? You have been checking his cell phone and he's beating you. The marks on your face, everywhere on your body. He did it. You have been following him up and down, insulting him when he comes back, letting him know how he's a low life, how you have been the one feeding him, how you have been doing this, you've been doing that, how you don't deserve this and your attention is so focused on him. Begin to think of yourself. Woman of God, find yourself. That is the first I have here on my list. And how do you find yourself? Knowing God is finding yourself. To those that have been old here, you know this song I love so much by Minister Dusi Oyenika. A Nigerian. And it says, just one passion. I keep singing this in all my videos. One purpose is to know you more and more. When I know you, I'll find me. Leave that man. Just one passion and one purpose is to know God more and more. When you know him, you'll find you. No life outside him. No one beside him. Child of God, to know Jesus more and more. When you know him, you'll find you. Child of God, you are so concentrated on that man. 
Your focus, your strength is on your husband who is cheating on you. And you're gradually missing it. You're gradually losing it. After this video, I want you to go to the mirror and look at yourself. And say to yourself, call yourself by that name. Call yourself, Noye Eze, I will find myself. And how will you find yourself? By digging deep into the word of God. By casting your net again into the deep. By saying, God, I want to know you more. Child of God, nobody may have told you. But I am here to say to you that you need to find God more. Ask him, where have you fallen short? Where have you missed it? What is that thing that you have missed that is making that man go outside? I want you to take your mind off voodoo and spell that the other woman must have used on him. That is a story and the work of God. That is the job of God. That is the responsibility of God. Do you. Do the one you ought to do. And knowing yourself is knowing God. Go back to the place of prayer. Say, Father, where have I fallen? What is that thing that has taken my heart off you? Father, I come back to you as your daughter. I put my focus more on you. I channel my energy more on you. Some of you have made your husbands your God. All you care about is him and the strange woman. Focus on you and God. Say, Father, I want to know you more. I want to go back to the place of the midnight prayers. I want to go back to my routine of daily prayers. When was the last time you took your Bible and you began to study? All that you have occupied your heart with is the strange woman and your husband. Come on. You are gradually missing it. You are gradually losing it. That is the first on my list. Come back to the place of prayer. Launch again into the deep. Just like Simon Peter. I tell you, if you go back again, not because you want your husband back, no. But because you want to find yourself. Say, Father, I have missed it. Some of you no longer dream dreams. So if you no longer see revelations, the Lord, the, in fact, the Lord has lost you. Because you're focused on the man he has given to you. Did the Lord do bad by giving you that husband? If the husband he gave to you is now a cheating man, instead of chasing after that man, monitoring him and the strange woman, go back to the giver. Go back to the giver. In the place of prayer, go back to the giver. Say, Father, since the man you have given to me have decided to keep following a strange woman, I come back to you. For now, you're the husband I know. Use me like never before. If there is any way I have lost concentration where you are, forgive me. I am back. Begin to use me in your way. Use me to your glory. I want to work for you. I want to know you more and the power of your resurrection. I want people to see Jesus in me. Remove every, every distraction out of my heart. You no longer go to church. You no longer pay your tithes. Offerings, zero. Nothing you are doing for God. Because all your focus and gaze is on the man that the Lord has given to you. Please, come back to knowing yourself. Come back to finding yourself. Knowing God is finding yourself. Please come back, come back, come back. Come back. Enough of the, you know, the man, the man, the man. No. Let him work. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> Anyways, um, by the grace of God, I'll be here. I'll be here to listen to your testimonies. By the time you, 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 you take your eyes off that man and you, you put your gaze on God, I tell you, he will begin to look for you. These are some principles that nobody may tell you, but I will always tell you. When he sees that you no longer ask him, where are you coming from? He comes back, the bed is dressed everywhere is neat. There is food by God's grace, there is food for him to eat. If he drops money, his business, he does not drop. As a virtuous woman, you have made food, you give him, he eats, and you're not looking at his phone, you don't care. He sees you, your, your alarm rings, and you begin to, Malahan Tayada, 
Suza hiva gados kalabaya. And those malahin sayada. You begin. He hears you speaking in tongues. He hears you praying. And you're not calling his name. Child of God. You are not saying, Father, let Jones come back. Father, let Peter come back. Father. No. You're saying, Father, I want to know you more. That I may know you and the power of your resurrection. Show me who you truly are. I want to see an undiluted God. I want to see a raw God in my family. I want to see you just as you are in my home. I want to know you more. That is all you're praying about. That is all you are praying about. You think he will not put his ears to know if you're calling his name? This man can be funny. When you're praying, he's, he's wondering whether you're saying, let fire, let thunder, let brimstone. No! Father, I want to know you more. I come back to you. Forgive me for focusing on any other thing that, does, that means nothing to you. Forgive me for putting my gaze on something else. Forgive me for giving up because I did not catch a fish. Oh, I come back again and I'm lodging into the deep. Use me, O oh God, like never before. And you'll be shocked. You will be shocked when things begin to turn around. <laughs> I don't want to blow your mind. Just go back to the place of prayer. And you will testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Secondly, the second thing to do if you have a cheating husband. Like I said, now you have gone back to the place of prayer. You have gone back to know yourself. The only prayer point that you may be needing your husband's name is Father. Let my husband have a divine encounter. Let my husband encounter you raw. Let my husband encounter you just like Saul encountered you on his way to Damascus. <laughs> Let my husband encounter you. <laughs> if your husband encounter God, if God shows himself to your husband undiluted, raw, he will run back to you on bended news, apologizing, confessing the things that... Hmm. I'll tell you one of the things a man that encounters God will experience. Number one, he will begin to dream dreams. <laughs> the first encounter that I have ever heard from a sister I cancel, the first encounter is that God began to use the face of the strange woman ha, to chase him in the dream, to torment him in the dream. Things began to turn around like he started, the face of the strange woman in the dream was first and the strange man started attacking him in the dream. He gets up, oh, and he's panting. And the wife is asking him, he said, hey, there's this lady I helped. There's this, he started confessing. Repeatedly, I'm not telling you just for one night. Repeatedly, the, straight, the same person he goes to have carnal knowledge with. The Lord begins to use the face of the strange woman to chase him in the dream. And he started experiencing some form of hardship. When it begins to happen like that, child of God, don't feel pity. Don't feel pity. Yes, things will turn around, but for now, they are working out for your good. <laughs> if that money that the Lord will bless your husband with will cause you pains and sorrow, child of God, your prayers, I'm telling you, your prayers may hinder it. I'm not telling you to pray that God don't bless my husband. No. But he knows what is best for you. And that's why there are some difficulties, even me as a woman of God. There are some difficulties my husband faces. I just give glory to God. I just give glory to God. I say, ah, what was happening? Provided that I have prayed, I have prayed against the success syndrome. I have prayed against all forces of darkness. And this thing keeps not coming forth. I begin to praise God. You have no idea what God is averting. And I'm telling you, these are spiritual principles that you need to know as a child of God. Child of God, the moment the strange woman begins to chase him in the dream, 
He begins to have nightmare with the face of the strange woman in it. Before you know it, difficulties from nowhere. Financial difficulties. And of course, as a human, you're seeing a face chasing you in the dream. And the same week or the following week, you begin to face financial difficulties. What will you think as a woman? Oh, it's the strange woman. I'm not here to exaggerate or to make you smile or laugh. No, 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 no. I am telling you reality. When he sees the phone ringing and it is the strange woman, he will busy the call, block the line and delete it. <laughs> so the second thing to do is, Father, let my husband encounter you. So many of you under the sound of my voice, all your husband needs is divine encounter. Divine encounter. To encounter God raw and undiluted. Just as he is. He begins to show himself to your husband. The second encounter that your husband may likely experience is being in a dangerous situation in the dream. And you are there to help him. <laughs> and you are there to help him. So many of you, they have done you and your husband like this. You see my hand? You see my hand? The evil people <laughs> have done you and your husband like this. Like your backs are like this. He does not care. He does not want to see you. Father, let my husband see you raw, undiluted, divine encounter. Show yourself to him. And one of the things he'll be experiencing, like I am saying now, is that he will be in a very dangerous situation in the dream. And you'll be there to help him. He will be sick in the dream. And you pray for him, he becomes well. He will be attacked by spiritual forces. And when you step into that place, they flee. I am telling you, <laughs> I am telling you what divine encounter can be or can be like better still. I am speaking to you. I am a living witness of God's undiluted encounter. There was a time my husband, <laughs> it was back to back revelations about me. Then we were so young in marriage. And of course, I also faced some things, especially from my in-laws, to the glory of God. And I just prayed one prayer. I said, God, I don't know what they're accusing me of. I don't know what they are calling me. And I don't care to know. But because I know that you have brought me to this family for a reason. Show yourself to my husband, who I am. If I am a bad wife, show it to him. I pray this prayer from the depth of my heart. If you have brought me into his life, show it to him. Because I knew that a wicked person was involved. A third party was involved in everything that was happening in my home. I said, Father, I am not here to send anybody to any grave because nobody's life is in my hands. I don't even have the power. But Father, let my husband encounter you raw. Show him what he needs to know. And like I just said, the Lord started using me to do things in his life, spiritually. Unknowingly to me that there were some things he was going through in life. But because a third party was involved, a strange person was involved. My husband was not even telling me. Medical issues, some little, little medical issues that are nothing to God. Are nothing if we even hold our hands as couple to pray. But because the enemy knows that when two agree a sin in the name of God, hey, it shall be established. They does this way. And it was confusion. It was confusion. If I say this, he says this. We were not working. I just knew that an enemy has done this. I did not fight. If I say yes and he says no, I just relax. I just knew that it was the finger of an enemy. And I said, God, undiluted encounter, undiluted encounter, raw encounter. I never knew. 
I never knew that he was battling with some health, little, little health issues. Little, little health issues. And the Lord just left it that way. So that it would be to his glory. My husband woke up one day and he said, ah, what's happening? I said, happening how? He said, I no longer feel this pain. I said, oh, you had pains? He said, yes. That it was me that took the pains away. I said, me? Hey. I said, please, oh, Jesus Christ is not added to my name. My name is Noye Ezeo. Which one is I took the pains away? How? I never knew you had pains. I never gave you a painkiller. How did I take the pains away? I said, Jesus took the pains away, or not me. He said, yes. Jesus took the pains away. But you just looked at it and the place became sealed. I said, are you serious? He said, yes. That he was having pains this way. And that the place is even swollen. I said, are you serious? I never knew about it. He said, eh, that he didn't want to bother me about it now. That the place is swollen and like an egg in it, painful. I said, are you serious? He said, yes. That he's been battling with this thing for some weeks now. He has even gone to the hospital. They said there's nothing in it. But he's not comfortable with the egg inside of it like a growth. I said, oh. I said, every you're a loser. He said, yes. But that in a revelation, he was telling me that, can't you see this place is swollen? I said, where yeah, is swollen? And he pointed the place to me. That when I looked at it, you know this fierce look? I just looked at it. Immediately, the thing was drying up. Drying up. Drying up and it dried off. People of God, till date, that growth is no longer there. As at when he was telling me, I saw it. Physically, I said, oh, this thing, I then touched it. I said, okay, the Lord has healed you now, so let's keep faith. And you know that within that same week, it dried off till today. To the glory of God. <laughs> God did it by himself. Using my face, I have lost count. If I begin to tell you the divine encounters my husband experienced. With the Lord using my face in revelations. I can remember one he also told me. That um, a strange woman came into the room. You know, like succubus. Came into the room uh, like a spiritual spouse. Came into the room like wanted to hold him. You know, she was saying sweet things to him. Saying sweet things to him. And you know, as a human, he was almost relaxing. And the lady wanted to, you know, like clamp on him. Immediately, I opened the door. He said, I just opened the door. As I opened the door, the lady shouted, Ah! And she disappeared. I said, are you serious? He said, yes. That as soon as I entered the door, it was like fire on her body. And she fled. I said, I said, me, no, he is it. He said, yes. I said, Father, glory be to your name. He is seen an undiluted God. So, child of God, I want to stop here. The video is becoming so long and I know interesting. Before I say goodbye, I know you've been wondering why I am holding um, a turkey in my hand um, in the thumbnail. That's because after you must have prayed to know God more and find yourself, you ask God for your husband to experience a divine encounter after doing these two prayers you can do you can take either a day or two to do these prayers from the depth of your heart you can do a midnight prayer as the spirit leads you can fast while you're asking god you want to know him more and you need your husband to experience a divine encounter anyhow it's okay as the spirit leads just do it all that matters is doing it wholeheartedly when you are done praying you go get yourself a turkey or a chicken. Yes. I don't know how you like yours. I like mine cooked and fried. Then I'll do a pepper sauce and I dip it into it. I eat with a bottle of, of course, non-alcoholic wine, a fruit juice, um, you know, soda, anything nice. You eat it and be happy. Eat it and be happy. When was the last time you went to the market to get a turkey for yourself? You've been walking, feeding this man. You are so in pain. He's fooling another woman. Child of God, get your chicken. Get your turkey. The best meat you love to eat. Get it. Sauce it. And eat it with chill drinks. At this point, please click on the subscribe button. I would have said this a long time. But please subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. The Lord just laid this in my heart to share. I've done a series of videos on the strange woman. 
and this is like the third or fourth video please keep doing everything don't stop just like simon peter launch again into the deep diversify do new things above all know god more so that you can find yourself some of you women are gradually losing it no don't lose yourself without the man you were there you were living there was a life before the man why drop the life because of the man it's an error mm -hmm. god bless you all it's now time to subscribe if you are yet to if the lord has laid in your heart to become a member in this channel membership is important honestly it's important being a member here on youtube it's also important being a patron i'll be dropping the link in the comment section do well by becoming a patron lots of benefits and one among the benefits of being either a member or a patron is you can tell me a topic to talk about yes i don't know the areas where you're confused in life Chat me up privately and tell me, Sister Noye Eze, I want you to talk about this topic. And as a member or a patron, I will do that by the grace of God without thinking about it. God bless you all. Make sure to click on the like button. It will help this video go viral. And again, share to family and friends. You have no idea whom you've been lifting her spirit. God bless you all. Remember, we rise by lifting others. Bye for now.